In today's video we're going to be going over some tips and tricks to make your maps look better in RPG Maker. Specifically today we're going to be talking about indoor mapping, specifically houses. And if you love RPG Maker tips, tricks, tutorials and just general discussion about RPG Maker then scroll down and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. We're going to start with a bedroom, so come over to the left and grab the carpet of your choice. I suggest either this beige or this blue right here. We're going to make our room three tiles down and then five tiles across. And then just fill that in. Then we're going to grab this wooden tile here and build the walls up too high. And then the one above that just so we can build the box of the room. Now there are multiple ways you can go about it. You can have the entrance coming in from the top, from the side, or from the bottom. For the sake of today's video, we're going to have it coming from the bottom. First thing we want to do is add some windows. So go over to the B tiles, and I like this green one here. Then we're going to select a bed. What I like to do with interior maps, especially for beds, is only use this top tile and I'll put it on the bottom somewhere here. I'm not a big fan of the way RPG Maker has beds using only two tiles. It looks like the bed comes out a good meter from the wall. So that's why I place mine right down here in one or the other corners. Then we're going to go over to the A tiles and grab a desk. I'm just going to make that too long. Back over to the B we're going to grab a chair. We're going to add in a bookcase and for the rest of the clutter a shelf here, a shelf there. We'll add a picture up on the wall, as well as a handwritten note above the shelf. And moving over to the C tiles, we're just going to put some papers and some quill and parchment. If this is one of the main characters' bedrooms, you can do something like adding a set of armour in the corner, as well as a set of swords just underneath the windowsill. The reason we're using carpets is because it gives a nice cosy feel to the bedroom. Having the beds at the bottom, as I explained, means that we don't have to use that weird looking two tiled bed. Alternatively, you could use a three tiled bed. Here's one that I've made and it's available for free on my Patreon. And that way, the character can stand here, walk in front of the bed, and it doesn't look like the bed's coming one metre away from the wall. And for the clutter, we found everything you might find in a bedroom. Some books, some paper, windows to the outside world. Another thing you can do is go over to the C tile and grab an equipment crate like that and place that on top of the desk as well. And here we have a nice cosy bedroom. Moving on to the living room. This one, we want to make seven wide by six tall. We'll fill that in. And I like to use this nice blue wallpaper. Again, keeping in theme and using that brown tile over the top. A fun way you can enter your living room is grab the wall tile, move it down on the side wall, grab the roof and move it across too, then down all the way. Grab a wooden floor and fill that out. Grab a stone tile, put that at the bottom, grab some stairs, and then you've got a fun little entrance into your living area. Now, a living area should, of course, have a fireplace, a comfortable chair for someone to sit in, a bookshelf, a table at the centre of the room for people to gather at and chat. We'll put some seats around that. Another desk in the corner down here. Another seat. And then we'll open this up by on the other side, opening up that living room. You want to make sure there's a fire in the fireplace, so click over to the Events tab and double click right here. Load up Images, scroll down to Flame. Click this one which has the flame and woods. We want walking animation on, stepping animation on, and direction fix. Now we have a fire going in the fireplace. For the table clutter, you can fill it with things like scrolls, books, pot plants. And for the desk over here, we can have another book as well as ink and paper. If we want that desk to have a better looking chair, we can move this wall up one, take that chair out, and put this chair in. And that would also help to add variety of colours to the scene. Moving on, the kitchen only needs to be a small room. We'll make this room 2 by 4 I like to use this wall here for the kitchen, and the same roof tile. And then just simply we want to go over to the B tiles, grab this whole selection of four tiles here, and paste them into your map. From here we can add a window, a bookshelf to hold some recipes. Moving over to the C tiles, we want to grab this tile right here, place it twice, and then grab the tile next to it, and place it over the top of one of them. And that way it looks like these are also hanging from a rack. You can also add another shelf above the stove to make it look like it holds oils. And for the final detail, you can have a clock on the wall so whoever's in there can time what they're cooking. To add a dining room onto this, all you need to do is extend this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then up. Find a wooden floor tile. 
and then put the table tile down, one, two, three, four. Place some chairs, one, two, three, four. Extend out the rest of the room, keeping in mind that the characters are going to need to be able to walk through here. And then extend the roof all the way around to your desired location. You can come into the kitchen from the front or from the side. With your dining room you can place more windows, some food on the table from the C-tab, a passive aggressive note on the wall from your roommate telling you to clean the dishes, and if you want to add a little extra something to your kitchen, you can extend it out to the side, bring it all the way around, and have a small section for a pantry. And lastly, just because it's fun to do so, we're going to be creating a bathroom, so we'll jump over to the A tiles and grab this tile right here, and make it 3x3. Three three. We're going to be using this pinkish tile for the walls, and again, still there's wood for the roof tile. Now again, you can come into the bathroom from the side or from the front. For the sake of this video, we'll be coming in from the front. Scroll over here and grab either this tile or this tile. I prefer this one here. We're going to be creating a square in the corner, and that's to represent some form of bath. One thing I like to do is move over to the B tiles and go down to the big fireplace. And where the bath is, I like to put the left-hand side of the fireplace as some sort of piping that runs into the bath. You can do the same on the other side if the bath was on the other side of the room. But I think that sort of looks like a piping, heating element for the bath. Next we're going to add in a window, just in the centre there. Moving over to the sea tile, we're just going to have some plants coming out from the bottom of that window. Then these sort of rucksacks also on the sea tile sort of look like towels. So we're going to grab some, place them down, and just as a finishing touch we'll add a shelf with some jars on it. And there you have a pretty funky looking bathroom. Now let's try and Frankenstein these all together. There we go, that's not bad for a house. Go over into the C tiles and find ourselves a nice cup of tea. And just place that on the table. Come over to the event tabs and click on top of the T. Change your image. And scroll down to other two. What we want to do is click on this white smoky tile right here. We want to have stepping animation on, direction fix on, and we want the frequency to be the highest. And we want the speed to be the fastest. Now this one's just going to be a parallel process. We're going to set movement route, this event, change opacity, and we're going to change that from 255 to 50. And what that's going to do is make it look like there's some smoke coming off the top of your cup of tea. So let's jump into the game and try that one out. Now just before I walk up into the kitchen and show you what this steaming tea effect looks like, if you guys are enjoying this content then consider scrolling down, hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you have any other ideas for tips and tricks that you'd like to see, mention it down in the comments and I'll make a video on it for you. Without further ado, let's move forward. And there we have it. As you can see, there's just a very small steam effect coming off that cup of tea or cup of coffee, and that just adds a little bit of depth to your scene. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.